Today is December 14th. This is the Microsoft DevSync. And here we go. Um, I'm not going to talk about my day, so I'll just go first and say I'm not talking about my day. Um, <laughs> Chris Vare, how was your day? Oh, my day was um, hardware centric. Um, so today I went through my um, devices that I have. I made sure I had a working Rev3 revision, revision, and I do, except for the audio isn't working yet. I need to flip my bit. Um, and then I met with Derek. He gave me the latest Rev of the board um, and basically an unassembled laser cut version. I'm going to follow Josh's video to um, to assemble that, just to kind of validate what the video is. And then I'm going to wait for the Panicore image to be ready before I put any software on it. Um, so that is not, um, so, so I was talking to Derek, and I think that's probably the next step with the Panicore images. We've got two guys working with them closely who are getting it ready. I think the next step is to have somebody with some technical knowledge um, go through it and see what hiccups there are. And then once um, I've done that, and and then we can move on to people who are not, maybe not as technically um, inclined to doing that as well. Um, that's all right with you. Um, OK. Would it make more sense to try to get, wait, did we ship one to Gez? I don't remember. Do we ship an, a Rev4 to Gez? Not yet. Well, that, that was, I was going to ask you about that. Ke the idea was Kevin was going to try and ship one from, from California. Oh, okay. I thought that's where we last left off. Yes, that is correct. Uh, if he, okay. If he were to to get more done, uh, but okay. Um, I've been uh, attending to other matters today, which hopefully the community will find out at some point. Um, I'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll check in with Kevin and see where we are with that. Okay, so uh, so you've got some hardware stuff, but uh, I I take it that you messed around with it enough to realize that you shouldn't be messing around with it. Is that uh... well? I haven't put. I haven't. I just got my uh, my my unassembled device from Derek. Okay. Um, just right before this meeting, so um, this afternoon I'm going to try to put it together using Josh's video to kind of validate that, um, and then I'm just I'm going to kind of leave it. I'm not going to really load. I'll use my V3, SJ2 on V3 until Panicore stuff is ready, and then I'll I'll load it with with a, right. you know, a Panicore image. Okay. From, so after you do that, the, you're you're, you're going to be back on to the uh, the Cellini side of things. Yeah, just just a day veering off on into hardware land. I'm, I'll be back on Cellini tomorrow. Okay, got it. Yes, what's going on? Um, yeah, I was going through uh, all the tickets to Panicor today and uh, or yesterday and, uh, and cleared out all the things that have um, already been addressed um, and verified that a bunch of bugs that we had seen in earlier images and no longer exist. Um, so they've all been fixed. So that cleared a lot of stuff up. Uh, added a new milestone to the Rev 4 of the board so that, that, that kind of segregates that a little bit for them so they can see which which items should be working with their current hardware and which they need to wait until Wednesday. Um, uh, um, we uh, had some a lovely uh, angry person in the community um, for a brief moment who uh, who just came in, you know, raging and and left in a, a, flame, a flame of glory. Um, and uh, it doesn't happen very often. We're, we're very lucky. We've got a really nice community. So hands up, like big claps to, to our community. Uh, yeah, everyone understood that he uh, had some stuff going on <laughs> and that he just needed to get booted. Um, what else? Yeah, I, I also, I'm still, I'm still fascinated by my Rev3 working, working so well. So I am, um, I did some testing and, and the, it's, the audio is not working with with any other image, um, so there is something like specific to the, the setup of this one image. Um, so I took a snapshot of it just so that we can come back to it if we ever need to. Um, but for the moment, I'm I'm just 
letting my curiosity die and, and leaving it there. Um, but anyway, it's, it's in unstable images if, um, on, on um, drives if anyone wants to have a play, but yeah. yeah uh, curious if that would anyway, replicate, that me. but uh, okay. Um, thanks, Gez. Uh, Ken. Yeah, so Gez, uh, it, it, it could be a lot of different things. I don't have any idea what it could be. It could be maybe that particular image has the built-in headphones turned off or something. But the, the thing that really drove us was when we demonstrated with the scope to XMOS that, hey, we've got everything set up, it should be working, and it's not, the response was, we don't support the Raspberry Pi 4. So that didn't give us any confidence. So I think it was more that driving the decision than anything. Um, anyway, what I did is I um, had sent out a, uh, a patch to uh, Kevin on Friday, uh, but it didn't work. So I got that working over the weekend and this morning. Um, it has to do with XMOS bring up Raspberry Pi GPIO and a bunch of timing stuff and technical things nobody in this meeting needs to know about. Um, most of it will, uh, I do have a working uh, patch file I sent to Kevin and I've applied several times, so worst case, we have a QT image that will work with uh, patches applied that I can get to work consistently. But uh, I decided to put that aside because Panacore will have their image shortly. And um, so that will, uh, that's where I'll focus my efforts if there's any to be focused on any issues with bring up in hardware. Um, so that being said, um, early this afternoon, I shifted over to uh, well, I worked with Kevin a little bit on some issues he's having. He's having some hardware issues. Um, and then I also uh, moved over to the, uh, the tagger stuff. I, I checked out a couple of the URLs. I sent Chris a request. He's going to do a pull request for me. Uh, once he has that, then I should be good to go with uh, in the morning um, getting back into that process. Uh, Chris, the only issue is um, you sent me the test URLs. Do you have the equivalent production URLs? Or do the test URLs have the entire corpus of 115,000 samples in them? You're muted. Uh, neither. Oh. There is data in test, and really, it's right now we're just testing at the that the that the um, endpoint works the way you want it to. Everything is in test right now. As soon as we sign off on this endpoint, then my plan is to go to production this week. Are those real files that are really on the NAS so that when you give me the full path, I'll be able to pull them over? Yes, they are. Okay. So if you get that pull request in the night, I'll get to that in the morning, and then we can talk about that uh, regarding whether everything looks scope aesthetic then, and then move on to, um, you know, might, maybe the next step might be to just get those uh, 115,000 samples into the test system initially and bang against that. Um, uh, and then we can, you know, move on to production later. But that's, uh, that's your call. Uh, that was it. Um, I sent Gez a new um, patch file that has some additional um, things that I needed to put in over the weekend to get this thing coming up. Uh, one of them was the uh, the wiring pi slash GPIO command line utility. One of them was um, the spy bus and the stuff that was blocking Derek's hardware from working last week. Uh, as I think I mentioned, I have a different Rev4 board than you all will get and mine doesn't require the parameters to be burned into firmware. So I didn't know that. <laughs> and Derek and I spent an, an entire morning trying to figure that out. Um, but now that I know that, uh, I got it working on Kevin's, even though I don't have a board to test. Um, and Kevin you know, told me that was working. So that's good. And that's incorporated as part of the process in that bring up uh, stuff I gave you, Gez. Uh, you'll see it as, uh, I think, a call out I think it's in the XMOS turn on and it calls out to a routine or something called send image to Pi or something or from Pi. But anyway, that's what that accomplishes. So yeah, when you go through the diffs, you'll see that there's more stuff. There was a missing ALSA config file that was causing record and not work and stuff like that. So that's all been fixed. Kevin's got it. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm moving on to the wake word stuff tomorrow until Panacore comes up and says, hey, I've got an image that boots and um, has your stuff in it, and then I can download that and test it on my working hardware here and begin iterating through that with them since the expectation is it won't work the first time out of the box. So that's what I've been working on.
All right, thanks. Um, Derek. I think I'm next. Yeah. Uh, so what Chris mentioned. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm easy. Uh, I printed uh, the final print for the audio chamber is assembled and running as fast as the printer will uh, print here. And then there are uh, five additional printers on the way, um, which allow us to really step up that game. And, uh, uh, and then dealing with uh, our good friends, the patent trolls. Um, and I think we should have some positive news on that in the near term. Okay, Derek. Thanks. All right. Um, so, yeah, so like Chris mentioned before, I um, met up with him and gave him, uh, kind of made the call to give him the one SJ201 Red 4 I had, because uh, I thought it would be more valuable in his hands. Uh, so we, we, and he also had some stuff to give to me. So we met up and, and uh, exchanged. And then the rest of the time has been um, doing some little tweaks to um, the, the last revision of the laser cut design because I've been using it uh, while working with Ken. And I uh, noticed some things that I thought really should be improved, like the accessibility of the Ethernet cable and the USB uh, area and all that. So I improved that. I added labels to uh, all the panels uh, for ease of assembly, and I finalized the fan location um, for a 40 millimeter square, uh, 10 millimeter deep fan that can mount internally and not uh, interfere with anything. And so I put the first, I put that rev together, which uh, Chris has uh, one of them, and I have one of them here. Um, so as soon as I can, I would like to, um, uh, I've been, Ricardo asked me to take a look at the Wi-Fi setup from the UX point of view. So as soon as we have an image that um, from Pantacore that I can just burn straight to a USB drive and plug in, um, I will do that. And that sounds like it might be coming tomorrow. Uh, so I'll do that with an R3 board, which won't matter for Wi-Fi setup anyway. Um, and I am just continuing to print parts um, to build more of the 3D printed designs. And now the audio chamber is shared by both uh, laser cut and 3D printed, so that's good. So um, I do want to get Ken another, uh, essentially this final laser cut version as well, uh, so like Chris uh, is doing um, through the assembly process, like the in the consumer so that we can get another um, opinion on that as well. So I'll try to get that in the mail tomorrow for you, Ken. So hopefully at the end of the week, uh, you and Chris will have the same same setup essentially. Josh, where is the best way to best place to find your instructions for the latest laser clock enclosure? Uh, I haven't updated the instructions. I did update the pictures. I can send them you, you the pictures, but it's it's pretty damn similar process unless there's uh, there, there's not that much change. It should work just fine. Okay, I'll just use the old one then. If you have questions, I'm around. Um, I should specify I got to go um, to Oahu uh, later today, and I'll be there all day tomorrow for a, a – I'm taking my dad to the hospital for some testing. All right. And just one minor note, Derek, um, by Friday, we still won't have the same boards because my board doesn't require the parameters to be flashed. So at some point when we, and I realize hardware's tight right now, but at some point it would be good to get one of those style boards in my hands because uh, short of me screwing something up, I won't be able to see if it's not working or if it is working. Um, I or Kevin could walk you through the process of removing the one chip that you need to remove to make that them the same. It's just the EEPROM chip that you'd need to remove. If you yeah, really to. Um, it's okay. I mean, I don't want to hack it up. I want to keep it working so I can not be disrupted when Panacore's image comes out. I'm just saying at some point in the future, it might not be a bad idea to get me one of those boards. Of course. Okay. Uh, so thanks for the updates. Uh, are there any other issues that we should uh, discuss or uh, need to have a breakout on? Seems like everything's moving ahead. 
slowly. Uh, <laughs> surely. Just a reminder to ping, I guess, ping Kevin and see when he could get one out to guest. Yeah, I've got that right here. I'll, I'll hit him up right after this. Just, just one thing from a high level, which is kind of an artifact from our earlier meeting. If we're expecting Panacor to demo something to us on Friday, now would be a good time to communicate to that them that to them clearly, as to what exactly we're expecting to see and what the timeline might be. You know, something along the lines that we're expecting to see it fully I've, working with all the audio, I've, and we'll have working hard by Wednesday or whatever. I've communicated that it's it's a, a very straightforward step by step thing. So um, they're they're aware. I did not want to go here with this, but I will. <laughs> we were not Wait. sure that last Friday we communicated to them properly what the expectations were. That was one of the byproducts of our meeting earlier. We felt like maybe we could have done a better job communicating our goals for the Friday demo to them. OK, well, that's simple enough to do. Well, why don't, why don't we just copy everyone on here? Uh, you know, what we used to do is just have a script, right? Uh, this was the script of what the demo was on Friday. And, um, you know, everybody kind of got to the point where they knew what it was. Why don't we copy everybody here? And it would even be great to have somebody with, a, you know, either Chris Bear or you can on standby with the latest image. We should be able to have that as well. I mean, they shouldn't be working on this <laughs> till the last minute, right? So we should have an image um, here too, to we could, yeah, we could I mean, look at. Um, I'll, but that's what I would suggest. Uh, we I'll, I'll also uh, add to my comment, Josh. I kind of agreed with you. I thought it was clear what we were expecting last Friday out of them. But for whatever reason, in our meeting earlier, we it, it was determined we could have communicated better. So I just want to make sure we don't have that issue this time. Uh, I think we're all in agreement that this Friday, if they get their working hardware on Wednesday, we're expecting to see an image that goes from womb to tomb, that they basically burn a fresh image onto a working device that they have in their hands. They demo to us that it comes up with the Wi-Fi connectivity solution, and it plays audio and records and runs Mycroft and works. And I think that's the sooner we can communicate those expectations to them about this Friday's demo, clearly, I think the better. Um, yeah, I sent them. I sent them a bullet list, you know, that, that detailed eight plus two. Yeah. So plus two is boots and connects to Wi-Fi and is number one, and number two is pairs, and then the eight skills are uh, news, timer, so on and so forth. I listed them. Um, you don't want to obviously, we're not going to hold because. But you see, that's part I of did the send. You don't. I did send, send them, them that. I t well, well, stop, stop. They're aware that if the eight don't work properly or up to our standard, that that's not on them, right? Okay. But okay. but one and two are absolutely on them, and then and then one through eight on the remaining skills are firmly on the on the shoulders of this team. Yes. Right? So yeah. so yeah, there's they're they're clear that they're not expected to go in and fix the timer skill, okay. but they are expected to have it boot pair via Wi-Fi pair with the Mycroft um, the Mycroft uh, back end. You know, have the device show up, and um, and from that point, we'll take the demo forward. But obviously, you know, the other eight skills, you know, it's important that the audio work, right? Like, it's great that it comes up and it connects to Wi-Fi and it pairs with your account. But if you know news doesn't work because there's no flipping audio, that's on Panacor too. Yeah, no, agreed, agreed. Um, this is the reason why I, I have changed my image in in the uh, Mattermost to Colombo. So um, <laughs> there's. <laughs> There's one additional uh, issue <laughs> to be <laughs> discussed regarding the whole process uh, that, that we had earlier, which is that Gez and I are the minority, that, that we're questioning why we're going to an external cell phone Wi-Fi setup when we have a soft keyboard on the Mark II. But we were kind of overruled that everybody else believes that we should have the cell phone Wi-Fi setup. And so I just wanted to run that by you and make sure that that was your intention. That the you won't you don't care about the soft keyboard Wi-Fi setup that's already working. The, so, the soft phone. keyboard Wi-Fi setup is a gimme, and if we if that's all we have to ship with, then that's what we will ship with. But you know that brings up the other issue that I wasn't going to bring up here, but now that I remember it, I will. Um, uh, Derek, can you uh, 
uh, can you ping across the the um, the spec for the rotary encoder for uh, to Kevin? Uh, I asked Kevin and Michael if they would please uh, provide pins if they're available, high-speed pins from the AT that'll allow us to use the Mark I rotary encoder mechanism, um, and then also to provide us with a uh, a raw 12 volt, so we can pick it right off the pins of the barrel. I'm fine with that. That in the future we may be able to hook a lipo to. Um, the second one is future proofing, and it'd be great, but it's not essential. Um, it, you know, hell, we we can just do through holes and not even solder them in. But it would be good to have them available. The the rotary encoder pins, I think, are critical. Um, and the reason I bring this up at this juncture is because that's why we want to be able to set up with cell phone. I think that having worked with Derek for the last six years. Like giving Derek a project where the design constraint is must use the SJ201, must use a Raspberry Pi, and must fit in the existing plastics for the Mark I is a very achievable thing. I think that Derek will, his, his CAD foo has gotten so much better over the last five years that I think he'll be able to get us from here there. And the only things then that would prevent us from shipping an updated Mark I without a screen, right, um, would be the Wi-Fi setup, which we wanted to be able to do via cell phone in that scenario, um, and the rotary encoder, right? Which, you know, we won't have access to all those top buttons. We're going to need a rotary encoder to run a menu, right? And so if we had those two things, we could take the existing plastics from the Mark I, 3D print some internal supports or whatever the hell it is, um, and start shipping Mark I's just as soon as I, we have a pile of SJ201s lying around the shop. And I think that that has a, that potentially has a lot of value for us. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting idea, uh, and we'll we'll take a look at it. Um, I think that uh, you know there's there's a lot of ways to get from here to there. Um, I think once we've got the SJ201 sorted, that uh, that'll be um, you know it'll it'd be a lot easier to figure out how we're gonna get that working. But if it's super simple, um, we'll we'll try to squeeze it in there. But I I'll tell you right now that. Um, we're kind of pin constrained uh, with the design as it is, so uh, it might not work. Okay, and if that's the case, I certainly don't want to do another rev of the boards in order to support that facility. But I think we should have the cell phone set up the the part that we're just managing to right now, so that in the future we can, you know, that that becomes just a gimme, right? Mm -hmm. I think yeah, I think it would be great, and I don't know if, if Panacore is working on this or not would be a configurable option to say, we want the Wi-Fi set up to use cell phones versus to use the screen. Uh, and that would be a win-win because then we could just flip a bit during the build process and have one way or the other. Yeah, sure, that, yeah, it comes into a, the make file for the build. Um, okay, great, any other uh, things out of left field people wanna talk about? Sorry. <laughs> nope. All right. Awesome. All right. Um, well, thanks, everybody. Uh, good luck, Josh, uh, with your dad tomorrow. Um, and uh, we'll talk to everybody uh, again tomorrow. Talk to everybody tomorrow.